my first month was in uh, March of all things. I was out on a canoe trip in the, on the Rio Grande and I got elected president. I got back and <laughs> we didn't really even have a transition meeting. I mean, it was, uh, you know, all, all hell broke loose. How does a club like MOAC that has been around for three decades in Maine weather something like the coronavirus? I'll tell you later. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And we've never had this one, like everybody else, you know, learning day by day and, and uh, doing what we can. I'll tell you one thing, I've learned how to Zoom, you know, by uh, fire and ice or something. And a lot of us have. The Maine Outdoor Adventure Club has about 600 members, but about only 100 are active, according to club president Dan Kidd. People don't know what to do. We're, we're all learning. You want to go somewhere, not being able to carpool is, is a big one. You know, if you want to go to, to New Hampshire to go hiking, now all of a sudden you have to drive yourself. And it was a lot easier when you just get in a car with a few people and, and, and go together. It's a lot, a lot more fun and, and easier. What I'm finding uh, with this COVID is uh, everybody seems to have a different level of comfort. I, I don't know if comfort's the right word. I see people hiking with masks on. It, it, to me, that seems like a form of torture. Some people are scared to death of it. You know, they won't leave the house. Other people, you know, they think it's a, I want to say a hoax, I make light of it. And actually that's caused friction because the two people, you know, somebody who thinks it's, it's nothing and someone takes it very seriously, that, that they're butting heads. So uh, that's, that's an issue we've had. Club members range in ages and experience levels and membership is inexpensive, just $20 for the year for one person or $30 for a family. What we're doing now is opening up a little more. Uh, we are running uh, events. So people in our club, they, people run their own events. And actually, if, it's, um, if you want to run your own event, you run it the way you want. And if you don't want to join in, you don't join in. There is room for doing things. And outdoors, like we do, we do all sorts of outdoors. It's, it's a good venue for getting out. People are going squirrely, as you know. And uh, it, it's funny, I, uh, I got a, a land trust that I started out in Lemington, and we used to have, you know, oh, one or two cars, but now you go by and there's 30 cars right at this little trailhead. You go, whoa, it's changing everything. And, you know, I don't see a problem with 30 cars there as long as the people aren't running over each other. You know, you, you see 30 cars, but nobody's there. They're all up on the mountain, you know, spread between them. You go to almost any trailhead and it's loaded with cars. We do a lot of hiking in New Hampshire, in the White Mountains, and they're hammered. You know, people are getting out. And I think it's great. I think people are gonna think of the environment as a bigger item than we have. A lot of these things we've always taken for granted because they're right at our doorstep. You know, you got a beautiful ocean, all these trails, you know, they've always been here. They always will be, you know, we don't know that. You know, you don't know that till they're gone. But uh, people are waking up, and I think it's, uh, for the most part, a good thing that way. You can live through it. Have you guys seen an uptick in members during coronavirus? Oh, well, it's been a downtick, actually. When it first hit, people said, well, what good is an outdoor club? We can't go outdoors. And then they started going squirrely, you know, and they're starting to think. And, and uh, we, like any other uh, organization, uh, have been suffering a little bit. Why do you think it's so important to maintain a club like MOAC? It's a great way to see a lot of things that, uh, and a lot of different uh, activities that you probably never thought of doing. Like uh, I got my list here. One of the oddball ones was ice boating. You know, we, we had somebody offer some ice boating because this is the wrong season. Scuba diving, caving. Uh, I, I do a lot of canoe trips to the Rio Grande River, you know, and, and it's cheap, you know, sailing on a real nice boat. You know, it's cheap. You know, they, we have tourists all over the place. They go down here and pay a hundred bucks on these nice schooners, you know, jump on uh, our boats. We have several in the uh, club and they're free. Opens you up to a lot of, uh, lot of things and a lot of people with, if, if you like the outdoors, like-minded people. I, I, would just, I would just urge people to, to join, just join. Come, come see what it's about. It's, it's a great club.